Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 9th of October. Afghan official Abdullah calls on India's foreign minister to discuss peace process bilateral ties. Anti-Pakistan protest in Gilgit, Pakistan demand release of political prisoners. And Nepal continues to record spike in COVID-19 cases, tally nears 100,000 mark. And now for all the details. Chairman of High Council for National Reconciliation in Afghanistan, Abdullah Abdullah, on Friday met India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar in New Delhi as part of his trip aimed at strengthening consensus and garner support for the Afghan peace process. This comes as the Afghan government and Taliban are putting efforts to negotiate a peace deal in a bid to return stability in war-ravaged Afghanistan. One of the chief negotiators with the Taliban in the intra-Afghan peace dialogue and the chairman of the High Council for National Reconciliation in Afghanistan, Abdullah Abdullah on Friday met India's Foreign Minister S. J. Shankar during his five-day trip to India. Both leaders during the meeting discussed a bilateral cooperation and regional issues, informed Jay Shankar in a tweet. He added, as a neighbor, India remains committed to peace, prosperity and stability in Afghanistan. Abdullah also took to Twitter and informed that the leaders exchanged views on the Afghan peace process. Abdullah's trip to India aimed at attracting support for the Afghan peace and strengthened regional consensus comes as negotiations between the Afghan government and the Taliban are being held in Qatar's capital Doha to restore peace in Afghanistan. Earlier this week, the Afghan leader called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and National Security Advisor Ajit Doval, wherein he affirmed the long-term commitment to further deepen India-Afghan ties. This is Abdullah's first visit to India after the formation of the new government in Afghanistan. India on Friday paid tributes to Ram Vilas Paswan, the country's food minister who passed away at the age of 74 on Thursday after a prolonged illness. Known for his political astuteness, had been part of the union cabinet in different coalition governments in his long political career and deeply influenced the electoral politics in his home state, Bihar. India on Friday paid last respects to Ram Vilas Paswan, the country's Minister for Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution, who died on Thursday after recently undergoing a heart surgery. Indian President Ramnath Kovin, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and leaders across the political spectrum paid their last respects to Paswan at his residence in New Delhi. The national flag was flown at half-mast in Delhi and capitals of all states and union territories as a mark of respect to Paswan, the founder of the Lok Jan Shakti Party and ally of PM Modi's ruling coalition. In his condolence message on Twitter, PM Modi said, I am saddened beyond words. There is a void in our nation that will perhaps never be filled. Paswan and his party represented India's socially disadvantaged classes. He worked with many prime ministers and served as India's mines, steel and telecommunication and information minister, among other portfolios in his long political career. In his role as food minister, he oversaw the world's biggest food welfare program. The Lok Jan Shakti Party or LJP enjoys considerable support in Paswan's home state of Bihar. State elections in the eastern state will start at the end of October and will be spread over three days. His son Chirag Paswan, a lawmaker, is leading the LJP into the voting to the state legislature. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan Muslim League Nawaz Stalwart and former Foreign Minister Khwaja Asif has said when the anti-government protest by Pakistan Democratic Movement will reach its peak, every lawmaker of the party will resign from the National Assembly. 
The remark comes at a time when the Pakistan Democratic Movement, the alliance of opposition parties in Pakistan, is gearing up for public rallies against the government. Pakistan Muslim League N or PMLN stalwart and former Foreign Minister Khwaja Asif has announced that when the Pakistan Democratic Movement or PDM's anti-government protest will reach its peak, every lawmaker of the party will resign from the National Assembly. Asif made the remarks while addressing PMLN's convention of parliamentarians and ticket holders on Thursday. This comes as around 11 Pakistani opposition parties, including the Pakistan People's Party, PMLN, Awami National Party and Jamaat Ulema Islam Fazl at the conclusion of all parties conference in September formed an alliance, the PDM and are now gearing up for its public rallies against the government. The opposition parties in Pakistan have been alleging Prime Minister Imran Khan's government has belittled the expectations of the general people and has left them in tatters amid the economic havoc caused by the coronavirus pandemic. The government has launched multiple crackdowns against several opposition leaders with the latest case under the sediction law filed against former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, his daughter Maryam and Pakistan administered Kashmir's Premier Raza Mohammad Farooq Ahmed Khan earlier this month. Moving on. A massive protest rally was held by locals and activists in Gilgit, Baltistan this week to demand immediate release of political prisoners in detention centers of Pakistani state and its army. The protesters expressed anger over systematic crackdowns on activists who highlight the exploitative agenda of Islamabad in the illegally occupied region. A massive protest rally was held by local and activists in Gilgit Baltistan's Hunza this week to demand the immediate release of political prisoners in detention centers of Pakistani state and its army. A wave of anger has swept towns and villages across the illegally occupied region over systematic crackdowns on the people who try to educate and aware public about exploitative agenda of Islamabad. The protesters shouting anti-establishment slogans demanded release of activist Baba Jan and 13 others who have been languishing in jails for almost nine years for leading a mass movement for just seeking compensation for survivors of a landslide. <laughs> Activists have long blamed draconian laws such as Schedule 4 and Anti-Terrorism Act are misused by Pakistan and have been framed on purpose to crush any civil dissent in the illegally occupied region. In news from Nepal, as Nepali capital Kathmandu continues to record spike in daily coronavirus cases, Health Ministry has urged people to take up more precautionary measures in order to curb the virus spread. Kathmandu Valley alone has recorded 36.59% of the tally of confirmed cases across the Himalayan nation, which is nearing the 100,000 mark. Nepal's health ministry has urged people in the country to adopt more precautionary measures against COVID-19 as the national capital Kathmandu logged more than 10,000 cases in the past one week. Dr. Jageshwar Gautam, spokesperson at the health ministry on Thursday, reading out the requests, alerted people to heighten their precautions as cases continue to rise. <laughs> Kathmandu Valley, which comprises Bhaktapur, Lalitpur, and Kathmandu districts, has alone recorded 36.59%. Of the confirmed COVID-19 cases across the Himalayan nation so far, Nepal's COVID-19 tally is nearing the 100,000 mark and has reported over 550 associated deaths. 
Moving on to news from Sri Lanka. Testifying before the Presidential Commission of Inquiry investigating the Easter Sunday attacks, former Sri Lankan Army Commander Mahesh Senanayake has revealed that former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe had not considered about national security in a serious manner and he had not fully cooperated with the National Security Council meetings. Sri Lanka's former Army Commander Mahesh Sainanayake informed the Presidential Commission of Inquiry investigating the Easter Sunday attacks that former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe had not considered about national security in a serious manner and he had not fully cooperated with the National Security Council or NSC meetings. Testifying before the Commission, the former Army Commander also revealed although Directorate of Military Intelligence had informed of prior warnings about the threats posed by Islamist extremist group National Tawhid Jamaat or NTJ and its leader Zaharan Hashim to the national security in 2018, no official at the NSC considered those warnings as serious. Even former President Maitripala Sirisena was aware of Zaharan's Islamic State ideology since 2018, he revealed. The previous government, headed by Sirisena and Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe, was blamed for its inability to prevent the attacks despite the prior intelligence made available on the impending attack. Ranil had earlier said that Sirisena ignored him during Security Council discussion before the Easter Sunday attacks. India's central bank left key interest rates unchanged on Friday while keeping policy accommodative to help pull the coronavirus ravaged economy out of its worst slump in four decades. The Reserve Bank of India or RBI on Friday kept key repo rate unchanged at 4% in view of rising inflation and faint signs of economic growth amid gradual lifting of COVID-19 countrywide lockdown. The central bank's newly constituted Monetary Policy Committee or MPC began its three-day meeting on, on October 7 and maintained the stance as accommodative. It also kept the reverse repo rate or the key borrowing rate unchanged at 3.35 percent. The MPC also decided to continue with the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary, at least through the current financial year and into the next year, to revive growth on a durable basis and mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while ensuring that inflation remains within the target going forward. India's economy has been the worst hit by the pandemic among major countries and new infections continue to climb. But RBI Governor Das said there were some encouraging signs of a business turnaround and activity could return to growth in the January to March quarter. Meanwhile, India has 6.84 million coronavirus cases, the second highest in the world, and its COVID-19 death toll has surged past 100,000. Social media has the power to change lives. And the latest example is of an elderly couple who sells home-cooked meals from a tiny kiosk in Indian capital, New Delhi. The story of their struggle in the coronavirus crisis went viral, prompting an outpouring of support on social media. It's a busy day for elderly couple Kanta Prasad and Badami Devi, unlike other days who sells home-cooked meals from a tiny kiosk in Malviya Nagar area of India's capital, New Delhi. A video of 80-year-old Prasad in tears as his business of a small roadside eatery, Baba Kadhaba, suffered a huge setback in the lockdown had surfaced on the internet. Their moving story touched many hearts, including celebrities bringing community together in a humanitarian effort to rebuild Baba Kadhaba. Since then, the kiosk has been crowded with many patrons showing up to help the local business and people have lined up to buy their food. All thanks to Gaurav Vasan, a food journalist with his own YouTube channel, who shared a video narrating their ordeals that went on to become viral in no time. <laughs> Baba Kadhaba is now being listed by Zomato for online food delivery. Social media has the power to change lives and the latest example is of the elderly couple. Though social media may have many cons, 
but every once in a while its powers are used for the good of society. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.